In 10.1, the very first thing we really need to talk about, uh, and the first thing we really need to, to kind of understand is the concept of inheritance. Now, this is one of those times where we are lucky that Java was developed in a way that relies so heavily on common sense use of the, the, you know, the vocabulary we have here. Uh, so like it says here, uh, this is 10.1, and I'll tell you that this is page 611. Like it says here on 611, inheritance allows a new class to extend an existing class. And at its very core, what does that mean? It means it can... Um, a subclass, uh, which is a new version of something to extend from an old version. So, and I, again, I'm not trying to make this more complicated than it is because I think you already understand inheritance because you know what it means to inherit, right? So when you inherit something from your parents, right? Your, your parents would be an object that existed before you. Each of them would be separate objects that existed before you. And they pass to you a certain set of traits. That's exactly what's happening here, is we have a super class. So think of it as one generation above the class that you are working with, and you would be the sub class. And in that super class are a default set of parameters. There are members of that super class. So, you know, a last name, uh, there would be an ethnicity, there would be things of that nature, and those are passed down to you. So that's exactly what is happening here with inheritance. We are looking to create a class that we can pass things down to future iterations of that class to make it easier to write. And that's exactly what's happening. But before we get really deep into that, it's important to think of the separation between generalization and specializ specialization in the way it is that we think about making our developments. So the example here, you can read, uh, it is insects versus a bee or a grasshopper, right? An insect is the super class. It's that abstract thing that you know you're looking at an insect when you look at a bee or a worm or a grasshopper, but those are subclasses of the bigger class, the, the insect class. Now, I like to point at vehicles here for us. Uh, this is my favorite example of this because vehicle can really mean a whole bunch of things, right? But almost nobody says, get in the vehicle, right? We say, get in the car, get in the van, get in the truck, hop on the motorcycle, hop on a bus, uh, take a seat on the submarine, or whatever we have to do, uh, because that is a vehicle. And a vehicle tells us uh, it is a mode of transportation for people. But then the subclasses tell us a lot more about that, right? A car tells us it's got four wheels. A sedan tells us it has four wheels and four doors. A motorcycle tells us it's a vehicle that has two wheels. A tricycle tells us it's a vehicle that has three wheels. So that's the idea between a general versus a specific kind of a class. So vehicle is very, very general. It gives us an idea of what the thing is that we're looking for. And then we specialize a car or a motorcycle or a scooter or whatever it happens to be. Now, when we are developing code, we can start to do this as well. If we have a broad selection of objects that we know we're going to keep making. It might actually be in your best interest as a developer to create a generalized class, so a super class. So if we think about all of the entities at Rock Valley 
college, right? We have students, we have instructors, we have staff, we have so on and so forth, right? It keeps on going, going, going. We could have a super class, a general class, where we describe basically what all of those subclasses would derive, but not exactly. So we could call it like a a member. That's a really poor name. I would be glad to shop this so we could find a better name for this, but let's just consider a member. A member is somebody who attends Rock Valley College in any way, shape, or form. So why do we need a general class? Well, because the uh, if we just look at the difference between a student and a faculty. So students, I would argue, all of them have first names. Students, I would argue, all of them have last names. Students, I would argue, all of them have social security numbers and S numbers and addresses and email addresses and phone numbers. Faculty, I would argue, have all of them last names. I would argue all faculty have first names. I would continue to argue that they have social security numbers and E numbers, E for employee this time. They would have addresses, they would have phone numbers, they would have email addresses, and so on and so forth. What about employees? You can see where this is going. So what if we had a general class called member? And member contained for us all of the fields and methods that we needed. It contained first name, last name, email address, phone number, home address, social security number, and all of those things. And it also contained all of the methods we would use for setting and getting on all of those. Then what we could do is create subclasses. So student, instructor, employee and we could specialize those out so students i would did uh, i would argue have a gpa that would be an important part of you know the student object class right and that's not so very important for instructors it's not so very important for staff either so this idea of general to specific really comes in handy when you're developing your code because if you can make an abstract something that you can you can point to and say mm, there's probably something that exists over it so if you can point to a a car and a truck and a motorcycle and a bicycle in a parking lot you're like yeah but there's something that they all have in common right they're all vehicles that's a class you can point to above it the thing I like to, the, the way I like to think about a super class is you don't call it by name when you identify a subclass of it, but you know it exists there. So what does that mean? Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know when you turn on a television and watch ESPN that you are watching football, that you are watching baseball, that you are watching basketball, that you are watching any of the different sports they have on there. You turn on ESPN, the Ocho, and you're watching, you know, like ping pong or whatever else. Each of those is a specific activity, right? Football, baseball, hockey. But each of those is really a sport, right? So you would never yell let's watch sport when you turn on espn you would rather say let's watch football so that's the the general object uh, is sport and the specific one is football baseball etc and you'll start to detect this pattern when you are developing solutions that are you know orders of magnitude larger than what we've been doing for the end of program or the end of chapter program exercises but in the workforce they come about really in in very very short order uh, and just you know allow yourself to consider that there is another class that might be just hovering above the one that you're developing now and you would never call what you're doing by that name, but you know it, it's a subcategory of that. 
if you can identify those when you are you know producing your project chances are you'll be able to use the idea of subclasses over and over and over again so that you can really streamline how it is that you are putting your developments together so we'll call this part one of inheritance which is generalization versus specialization